Hello, welcome to a new creature tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to animate this running fox in this tutorial. It's going to be a very quick and exciting tutorial and we're all going to learn something about using creatures very powerful procedural motor system to animate this running cartoon fox. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. So I am going to actually go through this tutorial in different phases and show you how it's done. It's going to be done in different layers. Okay, and let's actually examine the, the final or result animation that it looks like first. Okay, so you can see the legs are moving about, of course. You have the tail moving and flopping about its secondary motion. The, the ears are also flopping about through, through the secondary motion. And actually, even crucially, the head, the neck portion is also flopping about naturally. That's all done with the creature's procedural motors, which, which allows you to do secondary motion, follow through motion very easily. Okay, in, in, in addition to that, there's also a move or bounce gate at the bottom, driving the whole character up and down vertically, right? Okay, so let's start with the legs. Let's see how we actually get the legs done. And the legs are actually done with a two-step process. It's done using the custom cycle motor. So let's look at how it's done first, how the actual leg animation is constructed. So the way you use the custom cycle motor is first you construct a separate em empty animation clip to do your your keyframe keyframe recordings and what I mean by that is let me play this animation here this is called walk test and all it does is it animates one single cycle one single cycle that's that's non-looping one single non-looping cycle of keyframed leg animation and in this case you notice I've only actually keyframed two legs right the back leg and the front leg so the keyframes, let me drag this up, the keyframes go from frame 0 to frame 20, right? You can see as I step forward through the frames, as I step forward through the frames, the legs are moving in unison, okay? Now, of course, this is not the final animation, but it's, it's basically custom keyframe animation for the two legs of the fox. Now, sometimes you, you might have custom motion that isn't easily replicated with say the rotate cycle motor or rotate IK motor, sorry, the IK rotate, rotate motor or some other procedure motor. So you actually want to manually keyframe in custom motion. And you can do, do, do that really easily by simply just using the default FK which is basically keyframe, keyframe animation and just actually setting the points out that you want to get the custom motion you want for this three limb motion, right? So the, the fox the fox limbs have three limbs, right? So I'm basically just keyframing them for 20 frames. Okay, so once you're done with that, what you do is you actually want to capture this entire motion as a custom cycle motor. So how do you do that? The first thing you do is, of course, capture it. So click on the root bone, the root limb bone, and my pr preferred method is to use a shortcut. So I press Control and M, and that selects the entire chain of bones down, 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 down the line, right? And then you go to Animate, and then you move your mouse, you move your mouse over to this entry here. It says capture animation. So click on capture animation. And this basically allows you to basically record or capture that sequence of keyframes as a clip, as a capture clip, as an animation capture. So what you do is you enter in the correct frame values that you want to capture. In this case, we are, we, again, we're keyframing from 0 to 20, right? So you capture in from 0 to 20, and you give it a new name, say, new leg anon. Okay, and you click add. Now, I'm not going to add it here because I've already added in the captures, but in your case, when you're capturing your own custom animation, you just keyframe it, load up the animation capture screen, and then put in the correct start and end frame, end frames that you want to capture your keyframes in, and a name, and click add, and you have your keyframe animation captured. Okay, so now assuming we've captured these two legs, right? You've captured the 20 frame keyframe animation for the back leg over here, this guy over here, and the front leg over here. You capture them into two clips. The next step is to create a brand new empty animation clip. Right, we're going to make a new one. I have something called test over here. This is completely empty. Okay, this is this has no animation in it. Okay, no animation in it. It's completely empty. And now we're actually going to go through the through the process of putting in the custom leg motion that we created 
from the walk test into this character using the custom cycle motor. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's begin. So first of all, let's start installing the motors on the legs. So again, click on the root bone, control M, okay, and click custom cycle motor. And then let's do let's do do the same thing for the other leg, right? Custom cycle. And same thing here, the front legs. Let's install a custom cycle motor and the front legs as well. Let's install a custom cycle motor. Okay, so it does nothing, okay, because we just installed the motor, but there's no clip, no animation data assigned to it. So what do you do? Well, click again, click on the bone or bones that you installed the custom cycle motor on, and this entry called animation data is going to pop up. So click on the entry, it's empty. And now I have, remember, look, these are the clips that I've actually recorded for the keyframe custom cycle motor to to accept. So I'm going to pick back leg two for this guy. And if you play it, oh look, it's already playing back the back leg animation that I, re that I recorded. And what's cool about it is because it's what well, it's called a custom cycle motor. So it actually loops your non-looping leg animation automatically for you because it's actually a custom cycle motor. So it's actually your own custom cycle, custom procedure motor that you can make that repeats itself. So you can see the, the value and power in this already. You can use this like a regular procedure motor, but it actually plays back your custom data. And in fact, I'm going to do just that. So you can do a couple of interesting things with it. First of all, I think the leg is a bit too short, a bit too compressed for running motion. So I'm actually going to extend it. And there is actually a parameter called scale that I, that I can use. So right now the scale is set to 1, which is the default. So I can set it to say 1.2 and that automatically extends the leg, right? That's pretty cool. And remember, all these properties, every single motor property in Creature is keyframeable. So you can actually keyframe, key, it's all keyable. So you can keyframe every single property and actually animate them over time. So you can animate on top of your custom motion and makes it, it makes it a keyframeable procedural motor, if that makes any sense to you. A very powerful feature, I think. All right, so we've extended the legs. So let's do it for the back leg. So let me put it for 1.2 as well. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I haven't selected the, the, the leg here. Okay, so let me give it a back leg two animation. I haven't given it animation, I forgot about that, sorry. Okay, and now you can see the front and back legs are doing exactly the right thing. Okay, so let's do it for the front. Again, I'm gonna assign a front leg two animation to it and I'm going to give it a scale of 1.2 and I'm going to do it for the, 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 the back layer front leg <laughs> and again front leg 2 animation clip scale of 1.2 and let's play it okay alright so now we have some basic running motion of course it still looks very basic first of all there's no there's no gate there's no up and down motion so we need to do that right and also we probably want the fox to sort of ro pitch pitch up and pitch down rotate like a real running running motion right so to the, to do that we use our handy rotate cycle motor so let's select this bone over here we want him to pitch up and pitch down in an angular fashion so click install motor and we're going to use the rotate cycle motor and this time round we're going to give it if we play it now it looks ridiculous right because the angles are too large. So we're going to give it correct end and start angle. So I'm going to pick ne negative 20 degrees to 20 degrees. That looks like a good pitch, pitch delta, pitch angle to me. And we're going to increase the speed to say 5. Let's see what we get. Okay, so I think it mostly matches your running gait motion for the legs. And we're going to do the same thing for the rear the back end of the fox. So let's see if we can repeat that process. So again, click the rotate cycle motor for this bone. And of course it looks ridiculous because the end, end angles are too large. So let's set them to something more reasonable like negative 20 to 20 and up the speed to five. Actually it should be negative five because we want the rear to actually offset the front. We want it to move in the opposite direction, right? Right, so you have it there. Of course, if you think this is too much of a rotation, because this bone here doesn't, this shouldn't be rotating, but this bone instead, we can remove this motor, all right? So it doesn't rotate anymore. Let's install it here in the rear, the rear, the, the, the rear bone. Let's give that a go. Okay, so again, 20, minus 20, and let's give it a speed of negative five, so it moves in the opposite direction. There you go, that's more like it. 
right? So the reason why we have the speed of negative five versus five for here is five is in the positive direction. So it pitches up, you know, pitches down first and pitches up. But because this bone is facing to the right instead of the left, we have to give it a negative speed. Make sense? So it actually pitches in the right direction for running gait. Okay, so now we have something. It looks interesting, right? But we're still missing the overall root jump or gait motion, which is what this root bone is for. Now, when you author your rigs, I always recommend you put a root bone somewhere. It doesn't even have to live on the character. It's a, it's a global transformation or translation, however you want to put it, that lives outside of the character, so we can actually have some global motion, especially useful for any kind of running or walking motion. So we're going to select the root bone over here and click Install Motor. Let's pick the Move Bounce Motor. And this time round, I am going to set the amplitude x to zero because I don't because I don't want it to move left and right, but I do want it want it to move up and down. So let's give it a amplitude y. Let's see, let's give it an amplitude y of one. Let's see what we get. Okay, and let's increase the speed y to five. Okay, so now it's moving up and down. It might be a bit too much. So we can reduce the amplitude y to say 0.5, so it doesn't actually jump that much. Okay. All right. So we have some sort of running motion working. It's it's kind of cool, but it's, it's a bit too stiff, isn't it? This is what you get from traditional cutout or puppet animation, where it's you know things are just moving sort of rigidly, and it's just not really interesting. So let's loosen up the character because there's a lot of secondary motion, very interesting secondary motion going on when a fox is actually running. So let's start with the neck because that one's pretty cool. So we, we are actually going to use physics to loosen up the neck, right? So let's click on the bone over here, the base bone of the neck, and I'm also going to select control and click on these two bones here, right? I'm just going to apply a physics motor to the head and the neck bone. So click the install motor, click bend physics. Oh, there you go. You see? Now we've loosened up the, 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 the bones themselves, and now we actually get a more of a, a very nice relaxing follow-through motion for the head. Now it looks more natural. Now I can up the damping to make it bleed energy more. So, it, so the motion is a bit more lethargic if you want. It's, more, it's a common motion. So that all depends on you. I can do the same thing for the ears as well. I can click the base bone of the ear, control M, right? And then I can install a bend physics on the ears and let's see what happens. Oh, it becomes a floppy ear, except that it's a bit flop, it's a flopping a bit too much. So what we do is we should increase the stiffness. We want to make it a bit stiffer so I can up it to 100. Let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. So now the years are stiffer, but I also want to calm the motion down. So let's, there you go. It's a bit more controllable. So I can keep playing with these values, make it stiffer, to make, make it less floppy and make it calmer so it doesn't actually go that crazy. Now let's do the same thing for the back of the fox. Let's see what we get. Okay. So that's a bit too much. So let's give it a really stiff parameter and let's up the damping to say 25. So we get, ah, there you go. So a more controllable motion now. And we get both floppy ears and a neck, which is moving quite naturally. It actually has a bobby, flowy feel to the running gait of the fox, right? So we're almost done, except of course now the tail is too stiff. So let's do the same thing for the tail. So what we do is, again, we select the tailbone, like so, over here. Control M, select all the chain of bones, and then let's install a bend physics for the tail. Let's see what we get. <laughs> okay, so the tail is too floppy, no worries. So now what we do, same trick, let's increase the stiffness of the tail to say 200, and let's up the damping to say 25. Let's see what we get. Let's see. Ah, there you go. And now you have a complete motion of the fox where he's running. We have a running, uh, sort of a, a jumping, jumping, running gait going on. Everything is flowy, right? It's very nice. We have a follow-through motion, very nice follow-through motion for the neck and the ears, and also the tail. And oh, one more thing, we forgot to do the physics for the flesh. So let's do this chain of bones here as well, and let's increase the stiffness to say 500, and let's up the damping to say 25. Let's see how we get. Okay, maybe it's a bit too much, so you can play around with it. Let's take it down to 300. So the, the, the idea is just to give the flesh a somewhat floppy feel, but not to over-exaggerate it, just to, just to, just to li li liven up the motion just a bit, right? So let me remove the bones, 
And now you can see we have a fox, which is very dynamic and very natural as, as it moves up and down, running up and down. Uh, I can also increase the amplitude of the Y now, because if you want, if you want the character to, there you go, if you want a character to have more of a, a vertical gait. Now this is more of a running motion that I like. Right? So you can see we, we didn't spend too much time <laughs> actually, and we really have a complete running run cycle of a fox, completely secondary motion, which, to be honest, if you were to keyframe this, you could keyframe on a secondary motion, but if you were to do it yourself manually, it would take you a long time. But with Creature, with just a couple of clicks and install an installation of some basic physics procedural motors, we have this motion done in no time at all. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hope you learned a lot from from this entire tutorial or exercise. And the Fox sample files are, of course, downloadable, downloadable online. They're in the document, documentations page on the samples page. So feel free to grab that sample and play around with it. You can examine the different parts of the character and see how the custom cycle motors were installed and how the different physics motors were installed for the character. So I hope you have fun animating, and thanks for watching.